Hey guys, it's Mr. Winter. We're back with the year of Billy Miller and we're in part three, chapter three. Remember at the end of chapter two, um, at the end of chapter two, um, Billy thought that the pearl that Miss Silver gave him was very powerful because his sister Sal wanted it. Chapter three. Billy crept along the hallway and turned the corner. The strip of golden light that had been shining from beneath the guest room door was gone, meaning Gabby was asleep. Billy crept back to his room and quietly shut the door. He switched on his bedside lamp and then jammed a sweatshirt under the door so the light wouldn't leak into the hallway, drawing attention to himself, exposing his plan. Sal had been asleep for a long time. Like a tree dropping its leaves all at once, she'd collapse in a heap on the sofa right after they'd returned from the restaurant. She was probably exhausted from all her crying, or from asking Billy if she could have his magic pearl, which she'd done about a dozen times in the car on the ride home. After Gabby had carried Sal up to bed, Billy showed Gabby his Christmas presents, and then they played Crazy Eights. Gabby yawned frequently, covering her mouth with the fan of cards she held. Billy wished that Gabby would stop yawning. It was contagious. He began yawning, too, and felt himself growing sleepy, the last thing he wanted to be. One more hand, said Gabby, then bed. She yawned again. Already? asked Billy. I thought we could watch a movie or play a board game. His eyes were pleading. Oh, Billy, I can't, said Gabby. It's late, and you're yawning, too. We could have a snack, Billy suggested. Are you kidding, said Gabby. I'm so full from dinner, I feel like I'll never eat again. I still have my food, baby, she said with a chuckle, tipping her head and casting her eyes downward. Seriously, are you hungry already? Not really, but if you were, I'd sit with you while you ate. Gabby twisted her wrist to check her watch. Her bracelets, inches of them, silver and gold, surrounding the watch, jingled. She looked him up and down. I'm sorry, Billy boy, but it's time for bed. Wait, you said one more hand. Okay, said Gabby, a quick one. During their final hand, Billy held back from playing certain cards when he could have won, prolonging the game as long as possible. But soon Gabby was the winner, and he was off to bed. He went to the bathroom and brushed his teeth. He put on his pajamas and crawled under the covers. He said goodnight to Gabby and waited and waited and waited. When the house was quiet, he checked to see if the light in the guest room was still on. It was, so he went back to his room and waited some more. And when he checked again, the light was out. And now here he was in his room, ready to begin the night of staying awake. He told himself he could do this. He felt a shiver of excitement, then a buzzy sensation. If he made it through the night without sleeping, he'd be a different person somehow, a more important person. His eyelids were the problem. They were as heavy as steel. The situation was worse if he lay down. So he rose from his bed and paced around the room. But the bed was so inviting, soft, warm, that he couldn't help taking a break, allowing himself only to sit on it. He turned his bedside lamp off and on and off and on. He tried to read. He tried to draw. He tried counting backwards from a thousand. He looked at the dragon stamp on the envelope from Miss Silver, and then he took the pearl in his open palm and stared at it until it blurred. He pretended it really was magic. Stay awake, he whispered, stay awake. Just then an idea came to him. Billy's idea was to scare himself so badly that he couldn't sleep. He turned off the lights and sat in the dark on his bed, resting his back against the wall, his legs crisscrossed into a pretzel. He tried to imagine the worst possible things he could. He envisioned a life on his own without mom and papa, but that just made him sad. Think. A few memorably frightening scenes from movies danced before his eyes. Think. Some of the pictures in Papa's big, thick art books were weird and made him uneasy. He recalled them as best he could. Think. He began to convince himself that there was something hiding in the black space beneath his bed. Think. The something had white, melted flesh with oozing clusters of pimples for eyes. Its nose was a wet hole that made a whistling noise with each breath. It had long, stringy gray hair and thin, knobby fingers and bloody sores all over its naked body. It, it creaked and rattled and groaned. The thing ate children. Its teeth were sharp as needles. It was stretching and reaching, reaching and stretching, creeping right under him. The mattress groaned. The wind whistled. The radiator rattled. The house creaked. The curtains moved. The shadows vibrated. Billy found it hard to breathe. His heart was pounding. He still had the pearl in his hand and his grip around it was so tight his knuckles hurt. Awful things were where they didn't belong. Awful things were hidden everywhere. 
Billy repositioned himself, his bedspread pulled as if something were grabbing it from below. Then his room tilted and the walls started closing in on him. Billy sprang from his bed and bolted out of his room. He stopped suddenly. What should he do? Where should he go? He didn't want Gabby to think he was a baby. He, had, he fled down the hall and threw open the door. Sal, he said, his voice soft but frantic and breaking. Sal, wake up! And that's the end of chapter three. I'll be back next time with chapter four.